Jira is one of the best, if not the best, project management tool out there and in this beginner tutorial you are going to learn everything you need to know to successfully get started using Jira. We are going to get started with the Jira interface and while doing that I'm actually going to also explain to you all of the different terminologies and methodologies that you will have to know to successfully use Jira. Before we can get started signing up to Jira we will have to get some basic terminologies out out of the way. Now, as you can see right here, Jira is basically marked as the number one software development tool used by Agile teams. However, I assume most of you don't actually know what Agile means, so let's quickly cover that. What does Agile actually mean? Now, basically Agile is a project management approach which involves breaking down your projects into different kind of phases. You can see them on screen right here. And basically the goal of an Agile process is the continuous collaboration and improvement of your project. Now, basically the direct contrary to this would be the waterfall model where each phase must be completed before stepping to the next phase. And this will result in basically a lot of downtime and so on and basically the agile process is way more iterative and incremental and that's also the reason why nowadays basically all of the big players out there actually use an agile process rather than the waterfall model. Now basically to get started with Jira we are just going to get ourselves a free account. I'm not actually going to bore you with this, just put in all of your basic details. And once you've successfully registered you will be greeted with this page right here. Now we already discussed what Agile actually means, however when doing Agile there are actually two different approaches. The first would be the Kanban approach which basically is just a flexible methodology focused on visualizing uh, basically all of the work flow. Now you can use this, however as for this video we are actually going to use Scrum as this is probably going to be the approach that you are going to use at your company level and so on. And Scrum is also way more powerful in Kanban in my opinion in the sense that basically Scrum provides a way more structured workflow and structured framework on how to get things done. So either way just click on next right here. Now this is how the Jira dashboard is going to look like. Now this can be a little bit overwhelming to get started with, so please listen carefully. Now on the top right right here we do have our overall account settings, like for example we can change the theme, we can set up personal settings and we can also customize our profile. However I will not actually bore you with this, this is pretty self explanatory. However when we are going to go to the top left right here we can actually switch to all of the different Atlassian apps. Now basically Atlassian, the company behind Jira, is a suit that offers all sorts of different apps for project management, for plan tracking and so on, for collaborating, like for example Tre Trello right here. And you can basically seamlessly integrate all of these apps within Jira. However, as for this video, I'm not actually going to do this. And then we can actually also integrate Slack. However, more on that later on. Now right here under your work, you can actually see all of the work that is especially targeted for you. So basically when creating new tasks on Jira, you're always going to assign these tasks to a different kind of person. And right here under your work, all of the tasks that are assigned to you will actually show up. Under projects you can see an overview of all of the different projects that you have created and as for this video we are actually going to create a new project right here. Now we are once again going to use Scrum, however when using Jira there are actually tons of different templates that you can use for your workflows that is going to make the whole process way easier. So make sure to look into that beforehand, however we are going to use Scrum and you can then uh, basically use all of the methodologies that you are going to learn in this video for all of the other workflows as well. So just click on use template and then we will have to select a project type. Now basically there are two main project types as you can see right here, team managed as well as company managed. And basically the main difference is going to be that team managed is going to be maintained and managed by you, the team, and company managed is going to be maintained by Jira admins. So if you basically use Jira at a company level with multiple sub teams that are then going to collaborate with each other then you would most likely have to select company manage right here. However, if you are just going to use Jira for your team and if you don't plan to actually collaborate with other Jira teams, then just use team manage right here. 
Now the core functions are going to be exactly the same for both of these project types. However, as for this video, I'm just going to use tmanage for simplicity stakes. And as for name right here, you will just have to put in the name of your project. Now, as for me, I'm just going to put in account synchronization as this is going to be the dummy project that I'm going to build up for this video. However, just customize this to your likings. Then click on next. And now we are actually going to be redirected to the new project view. Uh, so just click on go to projects right here. And then we can see the view of our project. Now on the left, we can basically change the view of our project. We can either use board, backlog, or also timeline. And we're going to get into each of these views later on. For now, it is just important that you can actually toggle all of these views if you want to, and that you can also browse more features if you would wa if you want to essentially. Now as for filters right here, and um, these filters are basically just saved and reusable search terms that help you find different kind of tasks or issues faster. Now, one thing which I want to mention right away is that basically all of the tasks in Jira are actually going to be subdivided in different issue types. And it is super important to actually know the different issue types within Jira as this is going to be essential for your workflow. So let's quickly cover that right here. Now, basically Jira has three different issue types. The first one would be the epic issue types. Uh, and basically this kind of works as a hierarchy in the sense that the epic is going to be the first issue type. Now, when talking about the epic, basically the epic is going to be a big abstract view of work, which then gets broken down into several smaller tasks or also called issues called user stories. So these user stories would be the same uh, would be the second tier on our hierarchy. And basically these user stories follow a different kind of formula. Now you can see this formula right here. It is going to be as a persona, I want to, so that. So the first variable of our formula would be persona. So basically we will have to ask ourselves, who are we building this for? Now, we're not just after a job title, rather after the persona and actual interest of the customer. Then I want to, so basically what is their intent? What are they trying to achieve? Now, basically it is really important that you are going to follow this structure as most project management teams actually are used to this structure. So as for the third um, variable inside of formula, this would be so that. Now, what is the bigger picture? What is the overall benefit? And what problem should actually be solved? Now, basically these statements should be implementation free. So do not describe any part of the UI. And basically the only thing that you want to cover right here is the actual user goal. Now, you also don't want to uh, basically mention any technology and so on. So let's look at some examples. One would be as a regular customer, I want to invite my friends so that we can enjoy the service together. One other would be as a project owner, I want to add users to Jira so that we can work together on projects. And as you can see, these user stories don't actually involve any kind of technical terms like for example I want to code this and that and so on because this would be for our third tier in our hierarchy which would be the different kind of tasks. Now basically the tasks are going to be the actual tasks that have to be completed by your team for example your software engineering team for the success of the user story. So for example, this would be stuff like integrate Jira with Google, design the front end design, set up a database and so on. So this would be 100% technical for your team. Now, basically as for this video, we're going to create an example in the sense that we are going to build up a project for our account system. So our Epic would be setting up an account system. And then one of the user stories, for example, would be as a user, I want to set up my account so that I can communicate with my colleagues. One other would be as a user, I want to set up my account so that I can sync all of my data and so on. Once again, this is just an example project. And then the tasks would be stuff like design user registration form, implement front end validation, when registering and so on. Now these are the, these are just some examples which we are going to use in this video for simplicity stakes. So now head back to Jira and we're actually going to get back into the Jira dashboard. 
So let's continue add filters right here. Once again, this just would be saved and reusable terms that help you find different kind of issues way faster. As for dashboards, basically dashboards are going to be a, a whole overview of all of the different projects and of all of the different tasks that are assigned to you and so on. You can also edit this dashboard to your likings to basically add different kind of gadgets that you can then look at and that you can then see to basically just see how all of your projects are currently working and basically what kind of tasks you should do next. Now, as for teams right here, we can actually invite our team to Jira. So we can either use this by connecting Google, Slack or Microsoft, or just by putting in the names or emails of our new Jira team members. As for plans, this is going to be an advanced feature. So I'm not actually going to get into that. And under apps, we can actually see a whole overview of all of the different apps that are currently integrating with Jira. Now, just click on explore more apps right here. And right here, you can then see that Jira Jira currently offers over 1000 apps that seamlessly integrate with Jira. And this is super powerful. For example, you can basically, basically you can kind of think of any kind of app that you want. Let's for example, look at Gmail right here. And as you can see, uh, Jira actually has a cloud feature for Gmail. Okay, let's uh, look, uh, let, let's for example, look up GitHub right here. And you can see GitHub actually also offers an integration for Jira. Now, some of these apps are going to be third party. However, still Jira actually offers integrations for almost every app, which is super powerful in my opinion. And once you're ready, you can actually click on create right here to get started creating your first issue. And by the way, if you have any questions along the way, make sure to leave them in the comments down below and I will try to get back to you as soon as possible. And also it would really help me a lot if you could leave me any kind of feedback on what I could improve on my videos in the comments down below. So once you are on this create issue field right here, you will have to first of all select the project. In my case, I'm going to select this uh, account synchronization project, which is actually already selected by default. And then we will have to select the issue type. Now to get started with our hierarchy, we will have to get started with the first level, which would be our epic. So I will just select that right here. I'm going to select epic. As for status, this is to do because we actually haven't started working on our epic. And as for the summary, this would just be uh, the title of your epic essentially. I'm just going to name this account login system. Okay, as for the description, I'm not actually going to put in any kind of description right here. However, if you actually work with a team, please just put in all of your basic facts about the epic on what should actually be achieved with this epic so that everyone inside your team actually knows what's going on. Now, as for assignee right here, now this is a little bit more complicated than you might think like. So let's get back to our PowerPoint. Now, basically when doing scrum, we have different kind of scrum roles and these scrum roles will basically determine on what kind of, basically what kind of work each team member will have to do. And these scrum roles, once again, are kind of a hierarchy and are the following. Now, on the first level, we do have our project owner. This doesn't necessarily have to be the actual creator or company or actually stakeholder of your company. However, it also could be in some cases. Now, generally this project owner right here is just going to be the person that is going to be in charge of the project. Then we do have our scrum master as well as our scrum team. Now our scrum team would be the actual developers that are working on the project and the scrum master would just be a kind of an assignee that is actually going to look over the scrum team and that is kind of kind of going to work as a middleman between the project owner and between the scrum team. Now, as you can see right here, uh, we will actually have to put in an assignee. And in our case, this would be the Scrum Master. So I'm just going to select myself in this case because I don't have any actual team members added. But basically, you would just have to select your Scrum Master right here. As for labels, this is just for organizing purposes. You can basically put in whatever you want. I will just put in, I guess, login, okay? And then as for parent, you don't actually have to set this up because this is going to be set up automatically later on once you've created the epic. You can then set the start date, due date, as well as the issue color. Now, I personally always leave this at purple because Epic in my head is kind of a purple color. So I'm just going to leave this as it is. And as for the attachments, we can then also basically drop all of different files or all of different invoices and so on that are going to be valuable for this Epic inside right here. 
Now, when having multiple epics and multiple projects, we can actually set up linking, which basically just means that you can select that which kind of epic is, is going to have the most priority. And then let's, for example, say that this epic right here, account system, account synchronization, would then block other epics because this one is going to be more important. However, as I don't have multiple epics set up right now, I'm just going to click on create right here. All right, perfect. Then just head over to your project right here and then change the view to backlog. Now, the backlog is basically just going to be like a database for all of the different issues and all of the different issue types inside your project. Right here on top, we do have a sprint backlog, but under here, we also have a general backlog. Now, we're going to get into the sprint terminology in just a minute, but for now, I'm actually going to get started setting up our user stories. So I will just click on create issue right here. And as you can see, by default, user story is going to be selected, which is also the correct issue type. And once you've set up all of your user stories, make sure to actually connect these user stories to the correct epic. So just click on add epic right here and then select the epic for all of these user stories. And then by clicking right here on the user story, you can actually see the overview of this user story. Okay, right here we can then basically once again change everything the way we want to. We can add attachments to this, we can link issues as well as, we, as, well as adding new apps and so on. We can also add a description and pin different kind of fields. Now, as for labels right here, we once again can set this up. But one thing which I want to mention is story point estimate right here. Now, basically, as you can see right here, basically the story point is going to be the measurement of the complexity and or size of the requirements. So let's for example say, as a user, I want to set up my account so that I can communicate with my colleagues is going to be more basically is going to take longer as as a user, I want to directly log in through social media because with this second user story, basically you only have to integrate social media icons because this second user story is only going to involve integrating things like Google and so on. And for this first user story, you will actually have to set up a complete account system. So in this case, we could then say that this first user story has a story point estimate of eight. And this second one would have a story point estimate of let's say three. Okay, now one other thing which is important to mention is that when selecting these user stories right here, you can actually add different kind of child issues. And this would be actually the last step of our uh, hierarchy, which would be these, these tasks right here. So by adding these child issues right here, you can then add all of your tests. So for example, I'm just going to say design registration form implement front end validation for registering. And I'm basically just going to add some examples right here. All right, perfect. Now I'm, all right, perfect. Now I'm going to do the same for my other user stories. And as you can see, if we are now going to hover over this icon right here, we can see that each of these user stories actually have child issues attached to them. Now there's one other scrum methodology, which is super important to learn, which is called sprint. Now, as I've already mentioned beforehand, right here on top, we actually have our sprint backlog, but what does actually sprint mean? Now, basically you will just have to think like sprint kind of metaphorically, because essentially sprint is just a time box period with a specific goal and outcome. Now you will then have to allocate work that aligns with your goal and can be achieved on this time. Now, let's for example say that we are going to drag all of our backlog issues right here under the, uh, under the sprint backlog. So I'm quickly going to do that. And we can then click on start sprint right here on top. We will then have to give our sprint a name. I will just leave this at the default, I guess. And then as for the duration, we will have to set how long this should actually take. Now it is important to not make this too long due to the Parkinson law, but also not to make this too short essentially. Just be realistic right here. Then you can set the start date and you can also put in your sprint code right here. And once you've clicked on start, you will then be redirected to the sprint view where you can then basically drag all of these different kind of user stories around so basically, and once all of the user stories are going to be completed and are going to be marked as done, you can actually uh, click on complete sprint on the top right, and then you've completed your sprint. Now, one feature within Jira, which can save you hundreds of hours is going to be this automation feature right here. So let's click on create automation right here. And basically this can automate most of your workflows so that you don't waste time on tasks that are going to be repeatable. 
So just click on next right here, skip the tour, and then to get started, we will have to select a trigger. So for example, I will select a trigger issue created, and then we will have to basically add a new component. And then we will have to save this and then we will have to add a component. So this could be a if statement or we can also say for each. However, I will just select then. And then we can basically add all sorts of different actions as you can see right here. And we can even uh, use tools like, in, uh, like GitHub so that we can, for example, say that when an issue is created, we can create a branch in GitHub. However, for example, basically there are tons of different use cases for this. Uh, one thing which I actually really like is this send email option. And as you can see right here uh, in the preview, you can actually customize this so that, for example, your project owner is actually going to get an email and and that this project and that this email is then going to contain all of the information about the newly created issue. Now, if you found this video helpful, make sure to like and subscribe. Once again, if you have any questions, make sure to leave them in the comments down below and I will see you in the next one.